I'm glad to know I've got Brother Les to talk to the Father about me. Yeah. Thank you, Brother Les, for that wonderful song this morning and how comforted it is to know. All right, we're going to go to Psalm number 51 for our scripture today. We will just read probably through about verses uh, 13, perhaps. That's Psalm number 51. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, and thee only, have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shaken in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. But restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. And we want to pay particular attention to the prayer of David here when he said, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. I hope you have your bulletin in hand today. We'll look at the front of the bulletin here. It's got uh, something that I want to share with you about. I was looking through some pictures in my digital albums and ran across the picture that I printed here on your bulletin cover. This was one of my rare days of driving through the country. I cannot tell you where that is or uh, when I took it. It's been some years ago since I snapped that picture, but uh, this is one of the scenes that always catches my eye. And with camera in hand, I stopped and snapped that picture. Seemed like that as I looked at that picture in my, among my pictures, I got to thinking about how at one time this car was brand new. I mean to tell you, it looks like it's from the 50s. Brother Parker can probably tell exactly what that car is. 1950 Special Deluxe. <laughs> All right, I figured Brother Park would be able to say exactly what it was. He's a car buff. But anyway, can you think about when that car was brand new? Uh, you know, that back in an era when Dad was the breadwinner and Mother was the keeper at home. And I just kind of imagine Dad stopping by the dealership and picking up the keys to that new car, driving it home, and Mom and all the kids met him in the driveway excitedly excitedly examining the new car that dad had brought home and at one time that car was brand new at one time it still had the new car smell uh, i've often said maybe before i die i'll have a car that still has the new car smell but uh, the only thing i've done so far is to be able to pick up the air freshener at the car wars and uh, it doesn't work too effectively in convincing me that I'm in a new car. But anyway, just imagine that time, the new car smell. I mean, the chrome was shiny, paint was unblemished, and everybody excited and anticipating the first ride in Dad's new car. And no doubt, this old car, uh, it was delighted to become a part of the family of the new owner. And I'm sure it served someone well. I'm sure that there, that family uh, had a lot of blessing and benefit from that car. But as I looked at the picture, I thought that, you know, there's some days I feel just like that picture looks. 
You ever feel that way this morning? Just take a good look at that picture again. Do you ever feel just like that car looks? I thought it looks like it's been abandoned. It looks like it's completely useless. And in its current condition, it's kind of worthless. And I feel that way sometimes, don't you? Let's be honest this morning. I told Carol what I was going to preach, and she said, don't preach anything to let us down. And I said, I want to pick everybody up today. But I looked at this picture and thought, this isn't how a Christian ought to feel. Abandoned, useless, and worthless. God wants a joyful people. Now, God has a lot of joy in heaven. And I think when we pray, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, we may think God just going to pick up a five-gallon bucket and dump a bunch of joy on us. Well, that's not the way that it works. We've got to do our part in receiving the joy that God has for us to enjoy as his people. Now, there's a great joy in receiving Christ as Savior. Jesus said, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might be in you, and that your joy may be made full. You know, there's joy in receiving Christ, isn't there? I've heard people testify to the time that they allowed Jesus Christ into their heart and, and the joy that they experienced. Uh, and uh, I know that there is joy. The Bible says, with joy ye shall draw water from the wells of salvation. So there's joy in accepting Christ. There's joy in knowing that our sins are forgiven. David said, Blessed is the man whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is covered. Uh, and we are joyful in knowing that our sins have been forgiven. There's joy in fellowship with God. I appreciate the opportunity of a daily fellowship with God. And the Bible tells us that God is faithful through whom ye were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And we find joy in fellowship with the Lord. Uh, God has made us to where we can find joy in knowing him and serving him. And if we really find a true salvation today, we come into a relationship with God and his Son, Jesus Christ. Uh, there's joy in knowing God. There's joy in knowing that God loves us. You ought to have felt joyful this morning singing, Jesus loves me, this I know. Uh, and I think about the joy that God really wants us to have today. And yet in spite of it all, there are days that I have to say, I look, just, I feel just like that old car looks. Uh, but God doesn't want us to live that way. I know the joy and exuberance that God has for us can become a reality in our life. I know that we are in the middle of a pandemic that has brought so much distress in our lives and it's brought so many changes. Uh, Christmas Day was kind of a gloomy day at the Hayton House as Grandma sat there, Mom and Grandma sat there missing all the kids. Uh, and, uh, you know, it did bring a bit of gloom when we think of Christmas past and, and the joyous times that we would have as a family. But the pandemic, it's brought so much distress and it's brought so many changes into our life. Uh, it also has brought fear into our heart. Uh, seems like every time I hear the news of another friend or acquaintance uh, uh, getting COVID or passing away from COVID, uh, it makes me think uh, I may just uh, stay down in my hole in the ground for a while yet. Uh, I don't want to get that stuff. They tell me it's nasty stuff and I don't want to have it. And so, you know, sometimes that the, the doom and the gloom of the present situation, uh, it robs us of our joy. I know for many there's a gloom that has settled down upon us as we experience unanswered prayer. We think that our faith is so great and we are believing God so greatly. And yet in spite uh, of all of that, what we anticipate 
has not come to fruition. We prayed sincerely. We've trusted God, and yet our prayers are not answered. That robs me of my joy. And I know you can lecture me about in his time, and I believe that, but I don't always want to be in his time. I want it to be in my time. And that's where we get in trouble, isn't it? That's where we lose our joy when we fail to trust that God knows what he's doing. Uh, and it's so easy for our morale to get low as we struggle with life in an imperfect world. Uh, I can only imagine the heartache and the burden that some of you are carrying this morning as you sit here in the house of the Lord. Uh, so as I ran across that old picture, it just kind of seemed to stand out at me. Most preachers probably got their inspiration from spending hours in the Bible this week, but I got my inspiration from looking at the old pictures that I have in my digital album. And as I thought that car looks exactly how I feel, I thought, you know, God doesn't want us to feel that way. And you may for a season... But God has a better life for us. Uh, and we can pray, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Uh, so as I say, it looks as though it's been abandoned. And it looks like it's useless in its present condition. And it's probably quite worthless as it is. Uh, that's not how I want my life to be, Amen. nor do I want your life to be that. That old car has seen better days, and I think there's some of us that have seen better days as well. So maybe God will use the next few minutes of this sermon in helping us to see that uh, we can experience the joy of the Lord. Uh, and sometimes as we go through life, we feel maybe that God has abandoned us. Went to the funeral of dear friends some time ago, and and uh, the, the wife had passed away, and as I was visiting with the husband, he said, Charlie, we've been through so much with Jeannie's cancer. He said, there were times that we thought God had forgotten all about us. And you know, we all go through those times, don't we? Seem like that as we endure the sufferings and the sorrow and the distresses of life, it's easy to feel like that God has abandoned us. And uh, we struggle with these things. Uh, but the psalmist, he felt the same way. David, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me? And from the words of my roaring, oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not. And in the night season, and am not silent, but thou art holy, O God, that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in thee, they trusted, and thou didst redeem them, deliver them. They cried unto thee, and they were delivered. They trusted in thee, and were not confused. Uh, you know, I believe that we can just go on down through Psalm 22 and, and see that as he asked the question, why hast thou forsaken me? He comes to the end and he sees that thou art not far from me, O Lord. O, o my strength, haste thee to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword. And he goes on down through there talking of God's faithfulness. And you know God will be faithful. Amen. We may feel that we've been abandoned just like that old car looks like it's been abandoned. But we're serving one today that said, I will be with thee. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. When thou passest through the fire, I'll be with you. When you go through the deep waters, I'll be with you. Let me take another sip of Tammy stuff here. <laughs> believe it's helping Tammy. Thank you. But uh, really, when you think about it, the promises of God are unfailing. And we may feel that God has turned his back upon us for a while, but I say if we trust God, we'll experience the restoration of joy, even in the midst of all of life's suffering and sorrow. 
Think of the three Hebrew children thrown into the burning, fiery furnace. Uh, God didn't leave them alone down there, mm -hmm. did he? Next morning after it cooled down, I don't know what the king thought he would see after a roaring fire like that, but evidently he thought maybe there is something to the God that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, Abednego served. And so he crawled over and looked down into the furnace. His question, did not we cast three men into the furnace? I see four walking around. The fourth is like the Son of God. Uh, you know, God will not leave us alone. There's not much joy in feeling like that God has abandoned us. But I'm here to say today that if we learn to trust God in the midst of all of life's difficulties and troubles, we can know the joy that God has for us to know. When we pray, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, God is not going to uh, just kind of dump that bucket of joy upon us, uh, but he is going to teach us to trust him. And as we put our faith and our trust in God, Charlie Hayton, you need this this morning. As we put our faith and our trust in God, in the midst of all of this, we can experience the joy of salvation. Uh, so I'm glad today that even though we may feel abandoned, uh, the story I tell with that might be a little crude, but I'll go ahead and tell it. Uh, I thought this old man was driving through the country one day, and he saw this old abandoned farm, but the outhouse was still standing. And if you look, it looks like there's an outbuilding of some kind. I thought he went in there and fell in the hole and nobody ever came looking for him and the car just sat there all these years. So, well, that's just kind of one of my theories why that car is sitting where it's sitting. Yeah, but I don't know whether it was intentionally abandoned or, uh, or just what, but I don't think we ever need to uh, distress over uh, God abandoning us. He simply will be with us always even unto the end of the world. Uh, well, that car not only looks abandoned, but it looks kind of useless. I would say the battery is plumb dead, gas tank, gas evaporated out of it a long time ago. I didn't look real closely, but I imagine the tires are flat, uh, sitting there all that time. Uh, you know, there's not much joy until we learn to trust God in a time when we feel useless. Uh, again, we may pray, Lord, dump that bucket of joy uh, upon me. But he wants us to restore our joy by being filled with his Holy Spirit, charging our battery, filling our tank, airing up the tires, and getting out there to do something for God. If you're feeling useless today, it's not because God cannot use you. We've got to get to the place where we can find a useful place in the service of the king. Yeah, the poet said, I am happy in the service of the king. And I do think we can find joy out there in serving God. But a lot of us are useless today. Yeah, there is joy in serving the Lord. And if you find the joy of salvation... It's going to be because you find a useful place yeah. in serving God. Uh, uh, you know, one argument that we give, well, I can't do much, so I just won't do anything. Is that how we feel sometimes? There's just so little I can do that what I could do won't make much difference. It's true, a lot of us don't have much talent. Uh, most of us have limited resources. Uh, some of us have a very limited ability. I know I struggle with that sense of inadequacy. Lord, I just don't think I can uh, be of much use to you. But God has always used the weak and the small to bring glory to his name. Yeah. And if you're feeling like that old card looks kind of useless... Well, let's invite the Holy Spirit to come in and get us all fired up and charged up and get out there to do something for God. Uh, you know, it's just a small shepherd boy with nothing but a sling in his hand that went out and killed himself a giant. 
Well, he, he didn't have a full armor and a sword and a spear and all of that. It's just that God wants to use that, which seems so insignificant. Even the giant thought David, you know, was a joke of some kind. Well, I'll tear you apart and feed you to the birds. Uh, but, uh, you know, God had a different plan. Uh, and you may not have much in your hand today. Uh, question in the Bible, what is that in thy hand? What do you have in your hand today? that God can use to bring glory to His name. And when you're being used of God, you won't find a greater joy anywhere. Right. I tell you, I've been through some tough times. I think I talked about it last week. And yet, I, I look back over the years of my ministry, and for the most part, they've been joyful years. Uh, why? Because I am happy in the service of the King. Uh, and God wants you to find your joy today in just doing something for him. Just a young farmer named Gideon. He tells us he was the least of the least. And yet the walls of Jericho fell down as he was obedient to God. I mean, Gideon went out there, faced un 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 unimaginable odds uh, against the enemy. But look what happened. For it's all over because Gideon just obeyed the Lord in doing what God told him to do. Walls of Jericho fell flat. Uh, think of the time Christ was ministering to the multitude. The disciples were concerned. They'd been there all day long. Hadn't had a thing to eat. Uh, they're hungry, Lord. Send them away. Christ wanted to preach to them a little bit longer. He said, uh, just see what you can find in the way of food. This one little boy's mother had packed him a small lunch, two loaves and five little fishes. That's all that they could find, just a little sack lunch. Uh, but what happened when it was given to Christ? He blessed it and began to break it. Wow. And the multitudes ate with 12 baskets left over. I say today that we don't have the joy that we could have because we're useless. We're not on fire for God. We're not all fueled up with the Holy Spirit. Uh, but if you will be filled with the Spirit, go out in the power of His might, God will use you. And it may not be in a big way, may never be in the limelight. But I tell you, if it brings glory to God, that's what's important. I often think of dear little Lorena Vaughn, one of my members down in Cuba, Alabama. She had about as little as anybody that I've ever pastored. She didn't own a nice big home. Fact is, she just had a room in the home of another person. She didn't have much of an income. She didn't have much talent or ability. I mean, I never heard her sing a special, never heard her teach a, a Sunday school class. Never heard her lead prayer meeting. You think, well, she's pretty well useless, isn't it? Doesn't have any money, can't sing, can't teach. But you know what she did? She just did what she could. And if she heard of a sick mother, you could see her trotting across the little village of Cuba with a pan of hot soup, taking it over to that sick mother sticking around and doing a sink full of dirty dishes and straightening up the house and watching the kids until the mother felt better after her rest. Uh, I went over to visit one day. We got to talking about fish. Oh, I said, I love good old catfish. It's well, I like it too. And somebody brought me some fish the other day that they had caught. And she said, uh, I thought of somebody else that liked fish too. And she said, I ate a little bit of it and took the rest of it to my neighbor that likes fish. Uh, so unselfish, so generous in everything. And I think about the joy that she had. Never heard her complain about one thing. Never heard her uh, down in the dumps. Uh, every time I'd go visit, Sat out on the front porch looking at that big uh, magnolia tree in the front yard. I was always encouraged and lifted up. Oh, you'd think that little woman wouldn't be of much use. 
Lord, she was a blessing to so many down across the years, just doing what she could. So, you know, you may feel like that old car looks kind of useless, and you don't have any joy from being useless in the work of the Lord. God wants to use everybody here in some way today. So uh, you can find joy in being useful. Well, then I think about how that old car in its current condition is kind of worthless. Uh, and I feel kind of worthless today at times. And I don't have much joy in feeling like that that uh, I've been abandoned and, and not doing anything for God. But I say if I could get that old car down to Tim's garage over here, two doors down from me, he could restore that car in showroom condition to where it could have great value. And no matter where we are this morning spiritually, we may be all down among the gloom and the doom of life, feeling that God has abandoned us, uh, we may feel that, that we're of absolutely no use to God at all, but I say today that if we're lacking the joy of being something of value, God can take care of that because he is in the restoration business and he can restore the joy of salvation. Let's remember, God wants a joyful people. God wants a happy people. God wants us to be joyful in spite of all that we have to go through in life. Uh, there again, I don't want to embarrass uh, this couple right here, Steve and Tammy. Uh, but, but through all they've been through, I tell you, it's always such a joy to be with them. Hey. I mean, we have good times. They're always smiling. I haven't heard them complain. And you know, I believe that that's the kind of Christian that can maintain the joy of the Lord yeah. in spite of whatever we face. Uh, and so you may at times feel like that old car looks abandoned, useless, worthless. You're not going to have much joy living that kind of a life. Let's ask God to restore Amen. the joy of our salvation. Let's bow our hearts together in a moment of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for permitting us to stand here before this congregation this morning and bring the message that you laid upon our heart for this hour. And Lord, thou dost know the hearts of this people today, and it could be that there are some that, uh, Lord, would make this their prayer this morning, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. So may we have learned, Lord, that we need to put our faith and our trust in the promises of God yeah. in order that we might find joy in the midst of the feeling abandoned by God. Lord, help us to know today that we can find joy in being useful to God. Thou can show us just how we can be used of God, bring glory and honor to your name, to make a better world. And Lord, there's always joy in doing that. Lord, there is joy in knowing that we are of value. God, you value each one of our lives. <coughs> the very least of us, Lord, you love us and you care for us. And, and we are of great value to you. And we're so glad that thou dost value us so highly. And we find joy in knowing that God loves us and that we mean something to him. Yeah. So, Lord, minister to our hearts today. Should there be somebody that needs to pray this prayer, we pray that ere the day is over, Lord, they'll find that place of prayer, and Lord, that you will show them how they can have the joy of the Lord in their lives. Go with us from this place. Bring us back this evening. Pray, Lord, that you'll prepare and use Brother Steve tonight to minister to us in the 5 o'clock service. And may we look back upon this day and bask in the glory of it, we ask in Christ's name, amen. amen. You are dismissed.